Welcome class, Professor Steve. Um, and this lecture is just an introduction on uh, to the to the heterotrophs, to the to, to what heterotrophs are, and just to to, to get us started. Um, and I sort of loosely uh, group the 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 term heterotrophs with secondary production, um, and that's because primary production, as we've gone over, is the fixation of carbon, so taking the organic carbon and packaging it into in, in, into taking inorganic carbon and packaging it into organic carbon so that other organisms can use it and so that's the primary packaging of carbon and that's what we call it primary production um, secondary production then is sort of the first level of other organisms the heterotrophs consuming that primary production um, so there's it goes a little bit beyond what we call secondary production I'll get that to the minute in a minute but but so loosely I just grew group heterotrophic activity with secondary production <clears throat> but really the the, the definition um, if you just leave out the secondary production for a minute and just focus on this term heterotroph um, we talked about what that metabolism entailed um, but in regards to what those organisms are it's essentially everything else heterotrophs are any organism that consumes carbon that's been fixed from inorganic to organic in any form um, so so either um, they're either consuming the primary producers directly, right? And in the case of the of the of the ocean, that's primarily 90% phytoplankton fixing carbon, organic carbon, turning it into phytoplankton biomass, turning it into carbohydrate, essentially for other things to eat. So we're talking about the guys like these are our, our zooplankton, which either directly feed on these guys or byproducts, right? So phytoplankton, they make more phytoplankton, but they also excrete. Um, and die and break down and and become all different forms of organic matter so things can feed on it that way like the decomposers can feed on it that way but if a phytoplankton is eaten by a zooplankton and then the zooplankton is eaten by something else um, that's still considered heterotrophy because originally that organic carbon came from the fixation by 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 um by phytoplankton and so essentially we just lump these guys all together and I, I like to call them just the consumers right they're not the producers they're not primarily producing um, but they're any everything else if you're not an autotroph um, you're a consumer if you're not primary producing you're a secondary producer or a, just a consumer so just uh, I, I like to recap for each of these um, sort of how we classify things before I introduce new ways of classifying things. We said that all organisms can be broken down by cell type, right? And then you're either a prokaryote or a eukaryote. And then the prokaryotes and eukaryotes can both be broken down by metabolism. You're either an autotroph or a heterotroph, right? Autotrophs were the primary producers. Heterotrophs were, were covering in this unit. And they exist in both cell types. And then you can be broken down by what your energy type is. So how do you do that particular metabolism? And the autotrophs can all be broken down into two basic units. And you either do photosynthesis using light for your energy or chemosynthesis where you break down, um, where, where you burn chemical, you break bonds, chemical bonds for your energy. Um, uh, if on the prokaryotic side of things, that's where most of these these two are divided and where there's mostly the chemosynthesis. On the eukaryotic side of things, mostly everybody does photosynthesis. <clears throat> so just a recap and a little bit of an extension on carbon types. I know I keep saying these things ad nauseum and probably sick of hearing about it, but it's the only way it'll stick and you'll remember what's what, especially for the exam, but I really want you to leave the class sort of knowing what we're talking about. And I'm going to keep talking about in primary production, we turn inorganic carbon into organic carbon. Um, and if I'm using a molecule to designate that, I'm primarily talking about CO2 as the inorganic carbon. There are other kinds. There's carbonate, uh, carbonic, acid, carbonic acid, bicarbonate, and a couple of others. And they're all part of the cycle for inorganic carbon. But primarily the one we're concerned with is CO2. Um, and that's the most abundant one. Um, and then when I say we've turned it from inorganic to organic, we're talking about some kind of sugar or carbohydrate molecule, because it's these things that are the building blocks for all other kind of organic molecules. Right? So we're talking about carbon dioxide or carbohydrate. And when we're, but the difference is when it's organic carbon, it can be much more complex. Right? We can stack this up, combine it with other elements, and turn it into lots of different things. Um, we can make lots of cells and create an entire organism. <clears throat> 
those organisms can eat and produce byproducts or metabolites or waste products and so that it's so that organic carbon could also be classified as that product of an organism um, and when they break down and become as simple a molecule as this it's considered dissolved a dissolved molecule but when it's some of these larger products or if we're talking about an organism in terms of organic carbon um, then we call it particulate so anything that's not dissolved, if we're not talking about a dissolved single molecule of organic carbon um, or a single compound, then it's particulate, so meaning particle. Essentially think of it as I can trap this on a filter, I can catch it on a filter. If it's dissolved, it'll go through the filter. Um, and all CO2 is considered dissolved, whether it's dissolved in the atmosphere or dissolved in the seawater. It's considered dissolved in organic carbon. And I usually des I can sometimes designate those as DIC, dissolved inorganic carbon, um, or DOC, dissolved organic carbon. And if we're talking about particulate, I'll des sometimes designate it as POC, particulate organic carbon. Okay, so let's use the carbon and fixation of carbon, inorganic carbon, into organic carbon. Right here's two different ways of stating the same thing, which is what the autotrophs do. Um, and those are the primary producers and we'll use this to segue into sort of um, how this fits into a food web and, and feeds into the heterotrophic part of the food chain. So we designate these kinds of things or, or the most basic way to designate this interaction is through a trophic pyramid, what we call a tro uh, Eltonian trophic pyramid. Um, so primary producers are the base of the food chain, so they're the base of of the uh, of the pyramid, they also produce a lot more biomass, a lot more, a lot more of themselves um, th than any of the other organisms throughout the the food chain. Um, so they're the largest part of that. So what are they doing? They're taking, they're consuming CO2, turning it into consuming CO2, turning it into this biomass. But they take a lot of nutrients like nitrogen compounds, inorganic nitrogen compounds, phosphate. They need these nutrients to go along with the CO2, package it into this large base of the pyramid. So what happens is it's turned into carbohydrate um, by them. Organic forms or different forms of nitrogen, not only this one, but this is just an example. And the phosphate carries along too to be consumed by the next trophic level. And this first degree C is not one degree Celsius or two degrees Celsius, but this is this just stands for primary consumer. That big C stands for consumer. This stands for secondary consumer. So that just means first level consumer, secondary consumer. So the first level consumers can uh, consume the the uh, plant life or the phytoplankton, the primary producers. Those called herbivores because they eat the autotrophs. And then the secondary consumers. And and the pyramid could actually, in a food chain that's a lot longer, the pyramid could actually stack up to three, four, five. When they consume them, there's only 10% of transfer of organic matter and energy. So 10% of this biomass gets, um, after being consumed, becomes this biomass. And so that's another reason the pyramid is a good representation of a food web, because 90% of this of the primary producers that get consumed um, gets burned as energy, uh, excreted as waste, and a few other things. So 90% of it becomes burned energy and waste, and only 10% of it becomes the biomass that is this level of consumers. So you have to produce, let's say, in another example, you have to produce 100 units of grass to make 10 cows. Uh, and then you need 10 cows would only produce one human. Okay, so that's sort of a rough translation because the same thing happens from this level to this level. The, the, the carnivore would eat the herbivore and only 10% of that herbivore biomass will transfer uh, to that carnivore. Um, so now, why do I say I, I treat the term secondary production um, sort of loosely um, because it's it's a bit of a misnomer because if this is primary production where we do the carbon fixation the herbivores eat that primary production so these guys this level is considered secondary production primary production secondary production and then when a third level consumer eats the second level it's called tertiary production and so on and so forth quaternary and, and depend just depends on how many levels are in the food chain
But the essential thing to remember is that heterotrophs are consumers. They can be first level herbivores, second level carnivores, and so on and so forth if we have a bigger food chain. Okay, so how else do we can classify uh, the heterotrophs? Um, we talked about plankton, right? The plankton means you're made to wander or drift. Uh, it's depend on the Reynolds numbers. Numbers we've gone over that. Um, and these guys, there are plenty of zooplankton, which means they are consumers, but they are plankton. So they're wanderers or drifters. But there's also nekton. So these guys are the swimmers. So once you get large enough to overcome your 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 inertia becomes large enough to overcome your environment, you're a swimmer. You're considered nekton. Now within the plankton, it can be broken down into two different groups. Holoplankton are plankton that spend their entire life cycle in the water column being plankton. Um, and then meroplankton, because a lot of the larger organisms, including some of the larger, uh, some of the fish, um, including a lot of crustaceans, larger ones, crabs and, and lobsters and, and this kind of thing, can uh, spend only their larval stages or their juvenile stages as planktonic organisms. So they float around, they're subject to the currents, but only when they're young and as they become adults, they become nekton. Alright, so categorizing the heterotrophs, we said that heterotrophs, um, both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, um, uh, belong, to, um, exist as heterotrophs. And as a matter of fact, these are, between these two groups, the heterotrophic prokaryotes and eukaryotes are the majority of the organisms on Earth. Um, but what we can also do is classify them as to they, they consume the carbon and energy fixed by primary producers but how do they consume it so what's their lifestyle prokaryotes can only consume dissolved organic matter so dissolved P, dis, POC so particulate organic matter that has been um, that has been dissolved either by them or by other organisms or organic matter DOC dissolved organic carbon that has already that is already dissolved Eukaryotes now, eukaryotes can be broken down into um, their different level consumers, right? The primary consumers, first degree consumer, those are the herbivores, as these guys right here. And as you go up, you have secondary consumers, so they're herbivore consumers, which means the secondary eat the eat the, um, the herbivores, tertiary consumers, usually the top predators. If you have a short food chain like this, it's only three levels, then that second level is the top consumer. But the methods by which they eat fall into two basic categories. So how do they consume organic carbon? Uh, the two basic strategies are filter feeding, so you can be an organism that either sits still um, and just creates currents or has tentacles and they just filter they either use their tentacles to filter particles out to grab them and pull them in or they um, create feeding currents with other kinds of appendages uh, cilia or tentacles they create currents that drag the water through their whatever their mouth apparatus is and they catch these they catch they catch their prey that way and then there's active predation so do you swim and actively grab or actively capture um, do you actively hunt your 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 food so those are the two basic methods there. Now in terms of the range of organisms, uh, given the, the wide range of organic carbon that's available, ranging from a dissolved carbohydrate molecule all the way up to um, a large organism like a, like a giant fish, um, then it only, it only seems um, appropriate that there's a gigantic range of heterotrophic consumers. See in the middle here we have phytoplankton, um, which of course is not a consumer, um, and this is there's a pretty wide range of the phytoplankton um, in terms of size, from pico, from 0.2 to 20 microns, all the way to 20 millimeters if you count um, the organisms that form long chains. And so the organisms that can eat them are are varied, and so the organisms that eat the the herbivores are also varied. Um, some people consider viruses the very smallest heterotrophs, but there are kind of arguments as to whether viruses are really alive at all. Um, but then we just get bigger and bigger. We have the, all the the uh, protozoa that eat um, phytoplankton and eat each other, the copepods that eat them, the krill that eat them, the fish that eat them, the fish that eat them, and then even the largest predators um, or largest consumers 
um, ranging all the way up to 20 meters or even to 100 feet. All right, so thank you for joining me.